the tragedy of the commons. <clears throat> so the tragedy of the commons is a term that's is very important and useful in understanding uh, how humans negatively impact uh, natural resources. Uh, with the term was first coined in 1968 by Garrett Hardin. And basically what it's essentially saying is that uh, when we have these shared natural resources, in this case, a, a commons area that say a village shares, uh, that uh, we have a tendency to over exploit and then deplete, deplete that resource out of basically a sense of greed. It's just human nature to want to do better, right? So, so if all of us share this area, yeah, maybe there's enough food for all of our cows. But if somebody starts putting extra cows in, then the other guy does too. And before you know it, it ruins the commons area that we're all sharing. And so this this um, aspect of human nature, of our, our basically our approach to uh, interacting with nature, is something that has uh, shown up again and again. And it has negative consequences in terms of um, our impact on the world. So basically... Here's the situation you described. I said, okay, let's just say there's a public pasture area called, like, say, a commons, uh, where everyone's allowed to come and bring a cow. And it's a big enough land area that if everybody has a cow, then you can graze that cow on the grass of the commons, and you won't exceed the carrying capacity. So the commons, the grass will grow at a rate that's that's enough to keep all the cows alive. So you can milk your cow and uh, you make cheese and basically have this extra resource down, right? But the problem is, as soon as one person goes, hey, wait a second, what if I raise a second cow and sell that cow and make a profit? Now I'm exceeding the carrying capacity of that land. It begins to degrade. But what happens is the other people go, well, hey, wait a second. Oh, Eric's getting rich over here. If he's getting rich, I'm going to do it too. And so they start doing it. And they say, well, like, like I have to do it because otherwise my neighbor's going to do it. And before you know it, you completely overexploited the resource to where you've degraded the the uh, supportive environment, and then there's a collapse of, in this case, of, well, it's the sheep, I say it's cows, but that's the idea. And, and people have done this again and again and again, and it's just it happens because it's a combination of, of our, our built-in in sense of self-preservation, call it greed if you want, and and our inability to understand that. Even though our impacts are small individually, there's so many of us that, and, and even though the world seems really big, the summation of all these these little degradations that we cause adds up to a collapse of whole uh, ecosystems. So basically, it comes down to these things: like people are motivated by profit. We all want to look after ourselves and our family. It's just in our DNA. Right? That's how we evolved to be. Now, now uh, we're going to then, you know take advantage of whatever natural resources we can in order to make ourselves profitable in order to care for ourselves and our family. And, and what happens is if, if it's my resource that I'm exploiting, well, I'll tend to be careful with it because I'm like, well, if I overexploit, I'm hurting myself. But if it's a shared resource, like the commons, like the oceans, like the atmosphere, if it's a shared resource that I'm not personally responsible for, what the heck, I'm just going to go ahead and exploit it because it's not my problem and I can make money off of it. And so this, always leads to to problems to to very very serious environmental degradation and over exploitation of, of resources and so um the only way we can really keep this in check is through governmental regulation and laws if, if we don't have governmental bodies to hold us in check then always the tragedy of the commons will run its course and we'll end up destroying the very things we count on it's just again i, I would argue is it's not that we're bad people it's just how we evolved to be. We cannot conceive of the impact of, of our, our component of the problem on the overall picture. We just see the world is too big and ourselves as being too small and too important. And it, it's just it's just where is a conflict it's the confluence of human nature versus nature. And and it needs it needs a, a government organism to, to keep the tragedy of the commons in check. So I'll use TOC as us teachers tend to do that a lot to me the tragedy of the commons. Let's look at a few examples, okay? In the United States, there's, uh, you know, it's, the United States became an economic force largely through its agricultural might. We have this great grasslands in the middle, had this wonderful soil. Uh, and so the Americans began growing a lot of wheat and corn there, and they became very wealthy. Uh, you know, 17% of the world's grain grown in America, right? Now, but 
a lot of it is is irrigated with an underground aquifer called the Ogallala Aquifer. Now that aquifer is one that is not being recharged. It's a non-renewable resource. It's basically leftover meltwater from the glaciers as they recede at the end of last ice age. And so it's not like rainwater is replenishing this aquifer. It's a finite amount. And what happens is, you know, one person drilled a well and started spraying water, making a lot of profits. Someone says, heck, I'm going to do the same thing. And now we're at a point where it's, it's you know, it's maybe got one or two decades left and then it's going to be gone. It'll be this total collapse. And this is not unique to America. It's happening in China. It's happening in other places as well. So water resources are things that are classic example of tragedy of the commons. I'm just going to water my crops. How, how bad can that be? And everyone else feels the same way. And pretty soon there's not enough water to go around. Another really sad one is that we mentioned in the um, uh, overfishing uh, uh, screencast is uh, it's called the Grand Banks fishery. So uh, off of um, the waters off of Newfoundland in, in Nova Scotia in the eastern uh, provinces of uh, Canada had, had an amazing marine fishery for this type of fish called cod. Cod is this delicious bottom fish, very, very abundant. They say kids used to be able to just go out there and just like dunk a basket and pull these things up there everywhere. Well, what happened was, you know, for a long time, there was plenty of it. This, this shows how much fishing was done. And then technological improvements happened and people just started making lots of money by really fishing hard. And they, they fish and they fish and they fish so much that it completely depleted the resource and now there's it seems to be no cod left. Uh, and so it was a classic example of each person in it for themselves, not worried about the overall uh, health of that ecosystem. Just, you know, they just want to make their immediate short-term profit. And unfortunately, since they didn't own it, and, and actually the government tried to regulate it, but they they were too, uh, they were too afraid to impose the kind of restrictions they needed to impose. And as a result, the fishery completely collapsed. And atmospheric uh, pollution, you know, uh, we're going to talk about global warming this year for sure. It's going to be a major focus of this course, actually. And basically, we're dumping carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We see the atmosphere is just, just this place that everybody, oh, no, you know, nobody, nobody's in charge of the atmosphere. It's just something that's this global, uh, global commons, right? And we all just, hey, you know, I got this carbon dioxide, I'll just dump it there. And, you know, how, how much harm can that do? Well, overall, we see that over time it's affecting everybody. So it's the shared resource, the atmosphere, that we're all making little impacts on. And over time, it affects everybody. So this tragedy of the commons shows up again and again in environmental science. And basically, it just comes down to the fact that it is human nature to make a profit and to think in the short term. And that's why we need governments, because governments are the one organization we can have that can say, you know what? I understand that, but we need to look out for both people and these resources. And, and, and if you don't have governmental regulation, it always goes the wrong way. Uh, so, and again, it doesn't happen with private. If, if things are privately owned, people understand it's, 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 it's in my interest to protect my resources. So I'm not going to overexploit them, but when they're not my resources, when they're everybody's resources, that's when it happens. And that's why you need to have government uh, uh, regulation. So for instance, just um, in the United States, we have a thing called the National Forest Agency. So the Natural Forest Agency, basically, it oversees, um, it's called the Forest Service, actually. It basically says we're going to set aside lands called National Forests. And, and, and we want these forests to serve all kinds of things. We want to be able to use for mining. We want to be able to use them for, for logging. We want to use them for hunting, for grazing, for uh, for fishing, for just walking through nature and enjoying, you know, for the sort of cultural e uh, uh, ecosystem services. So, so the idea is, is in order to protect these lands from being overexploited by any one of those groups, we need to have a, a governmental controlling uh, agency. Otherwise, it, it will be toc to death in no time at all. Okay, so that's Tragedy of the Commons. We'll be talking about it quite a bit this semester uh, as we look at natural resources and how they get exploited.